one two one two one two testing one two three yes it's crazy i've been i've literally been waiting to to do this this interview for like i don't know i've been thinking about it i've been working um running uh these tracks through my mind and still right now i'm like they're finished but they there's one or two that still need tweaks and stuff. I don't know. I've just been thinking about doing this for a long time. And, and it's, it's finally happening. Um, it's like a... It feels like this album is my life's work. And... My life's work. So I'm 30, I'm 30 years old and... Uh, I've gone through what I've gone through so far in my life and uh, the last 10 years, I could say, I've been solidly working in this industry as a, as a musician and as, a, uh, yeah, as an artist creating music and creating things that I've been wanting to share with people and songs that I feel were, you know, in my heart. And it, it got to the point where I, so I'd finished three albums, had numerous number one hits and I, I, I didn't take a break. I've never taken a break, but I, I haven't released an album in a while and I've been working on many, many side projects, many, many, um, you know, productions and songs and writing songs for other artists and doing really incredible collaborations. I've been really busy with that part of it. But in between, in between my, uh, you know, a busy schedule and a, a busy life, I've been slowly building this album and knowing that at some point it would be released. And, and then now we're sitting here and, and in a, in a couple of days time this album is going to be released and it's it's literally a journey of it's like a journey of my life and a journey through what I've gone through but at the same time I, I do believe that this album is a it's an example of what the entire human race goes through. Um, when I say goes through, you know, it's life. It's absolutely beautiful, you know, this life that we, we have on earth and, and with, with all its, you know, dramas and struggles and hurt or heartbreak or um, roller coaster rides that we go through, if you zoom out and you stop sometimes and you look and you see what's led to now is what this album is about. Um, it's about pain, death, life, love, faith. It's about everything. It's literally an album about everything and there's 25 tracks that are, have become a story to me. It's my little story, but it's, it's a big story because I do believe it's a story that many people have gone through, are going through, and we're all in the story of life. So, yeah, this is City of God in the Jungle Below. It's this album I've been working on for four years flat out now not uh, not non-stop but in between other projects um, the oldest song on this album was written 10 years ago um, I I realized I wanted to create this album a long time ago it's been in my mind for you know since you know, 
since I can remember, I, I've been I've wanted to make an album of this size of this. It's a it, it's a concept album. You know, I'm such I'm I'm f a f such a fan of bands that have created a you know almost like a an audio film of this beautiful story uh, like Pink Floyd The Wall you know that that you know my dad always well when we were younger you know he, he, he would play the movie to us and we didn't really un I didn't really understand it but you know watching it again I realized the magnitude of an album like that or you know the Beatles Abbey Road it's in essence it's this concept it's conceptual album that has this in, inherent theme you know and and uh, trying to think of some other ones but I do believe this is a very important album that must be released and uh, I've, I'm such a perfectionist so it's taken me so long to finish it but at the same time I've always I've also been kind of concocting the story in my mind as well I didn't understand it at first but now it's all clear what this album is and and how the the whole story progresses through time and the fact that time doesn't uh, doesn't matter anyway so here we go I'm going to take you through the album and I'm going to visualize it as we go and I'm going to explain it because this album needs to be almost explained. I think if you know what these songs are about and what what is basically set out in this 25 songs and interludes and everything included, you will understand it better and you'll be able to relate it to it it relates to every life and it's about our journey through life to get to the next afterlife, you know. And I believe it's our journey to get to the city of God. That's what the album's about. Jeez, I'm getting so many calls. Why does this happen now when I'm trying to do an interview? I get like five missed calls and everyone's trying to get a hold of me. So the album really sort of takes off and the the scene is set with this song called revelation it's started off being like this intro thing but it developed into this really this quite a lengthy song and what i'm kind of getting at here is it's you know revelation was the last book of the bible so and the revelation the book of revelation talks about you know the the end times i'm quite intrigued with that concept and i i wanted to create a song that maybe you know embedded what that would sound like maybe so i wanted to embed you know the something earth like the earth shattering or the earth quaking kind of thing and then it to, it becomes this really intriguing almost the, this futuristic kind of feel and then it and then you 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 hear a whole an entire sort of build up of you know this intriguing almost creepy scary sort of build up and you hear some interesting things and i i created this piece you know a, yeah once again a very long time ago and it and it really does set the scene for the album um because it is, yeah, it, it's, it's got this apocalyptic kind of feel. And then it goes into this part where what I imagine would be, you know, after the world has ended and this, this lonely, lonely dude sitting at his piano telling the story about what, what has happened, what's going to happen with the world and, you know, it's almost like a prophetic message that comes through there and and it, it does set the scene for 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 what's to come and then the album goes into this the this the following track which is called jungle and jungle is very alternative song it's a it's got pop 
melodies, but it's it's very it can't really be described. I've played it to a few people, and uh, people don't understand, and you know, and or they can't place what genre it is. You know, so so jungle is about me running through my crazy life, and it's quite sort of certain parts are quite cynical you know I talk about my career I talk about the industry I talk about um, you know my, my life and I, I compare myself to you know running through the jungle and uh, you know like a tiger you know um, but but the fact that I'm a survivor and I'm you know never want to give up that kind of thing um, it's it's very it's very much it, it's it's very, it's quite a get up and go. It's it's a very um, up tempo. It's up tempo. It's, it's quite a motivational kind of feel, and it's very anthemic towards the end. I got a bug in my wine. <laughs> I'll drink it. It's fun. It's part of the experience. This album really needs to be listened to. If you're gonna to listen to this album, I advise you to listen to the whole thing. You know, it's it's not a kind of a song, uh, an album where you, I mean, you could pick out tracks, but it's like a movie you or a series. You wouldn't go, uh, you know, you, you wouldn't go into a, like a, a series and watch uh, season four and then start backtracking and stuff. It's this, it needs to be listened to from track one to track 25. Okay, so that's a little bit of a disclaimer. You can put that in the beginning. <laughs> I feel like a salesman here, but I'm just, just trying to describe it. It's, it's the way that I built this album is there's different chapters and different moods and feel, feelings and f sort of journeys and different parts of my life that it goes through. So it, it takes, it takes a trip through different states of being. It's the best way of describing it. Different states of being that I go through and have been through and am currently in, and it goes through those states of being. And, and each state of being is divided into chapters, and that's what, what it is. So now we're getting the album going. It, it then goes into this song called Apple Tree. Apple Tree is a once again tapping into that biblical theme of the Garden of Eden and Adam and Eve. And now this starts getting quite personal. It's a big metaphor for me and it's a metaphor for many relationships and many, um, you know, men, men and women that go through, you know, different parts of their lives and relationships. Basically the Adam and the Eve and it describes me as Adam, you know, basically giving my whole heart and my whole life up or for someone. And then, you know, I, I'm seeing this, watching it happen, unfold, unfold before my eyes, watching this person that I've given, you know, that I've given my heart to that is being pulled away by the apple tree and the snake in the Garden of Eden. And, and that's really the meaning behind the song and how, how that causes this rift. It causes this, this pain and this heartbreak and this, this rapture in the story. And then it goes into the, f the, the opening of the initial chapter and the first chapter is called pain and it talks about well pain i thought to myself when i made this and i i'll never forget you know i was in a real heartbroken situation i was very very heartbroken i was very down and this was once again it was a long time ago but I thought, how could I put what I feel into sounds? Not just writing a, 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 you know, a soppy old ballad, which I love doing. I love sitting at the piano and writing a, 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 a 
really meaningful emotional song. It's my favorite thing to do. But I thought, what about what I'm feeling now, if that could be if that could be put into sounds, not just words and stuff, but sounds. So I delved in and I, I love sitting at the computer and creating sounds with my voice and then altering them and warping, distorting and, you know, recording little sounds I hear in ev every day or taking a little basic synthesizer and just ripping it apart and rebuilding it and creating some interesting stuff. I created what pain, what I think pain would sound like. And it's really, really, it's dark. It's a really dark interlude. And then it, it the, the pain, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a dark interlude and, and that, that sets the scene for the chapter of pain. What happens if you listen to the end of that interlude, it takes you on a bit of a ride through real darkness. And then I wanted to, and that's where I introduce the theme music. And this is also one of the things about this album is there's certain melodies that pop up throughout the album. So that, that to me is, is, I wanted to do that. It's like a, a rock opera or a, a you know, uh, a, a cinematic piece where you've got different sounds that pop up again, you know, throughout the thing. So there we go. So you start hearing this almost very emotional piece of delicate piano start playing, but it's breaking. So it's like the love breaking apart. It's like the heart breaking. So that's that's what I put in there. And then the opening. Then it goes into the next song, which is the sound. The sound is taking that chapter and really you know it's it's a it's a heartbreak song it's about how you know my heart uh, the, the catch line is my heart's in the sound my heart's in the sound waves so it's about how you know now you're gone and but but what remains is the the echo of my heart beat and and it'll always be in the sound you know and that's in the song so that's that's the next song there and then it goes into cannibal which is a an old single well it's not old but it's a previous single of mine that that has you know it's it talks about this person being a a cannibal that ate my heart out so it, it gets very literal as well and um or metaphorical <laughs> no but it gets visual like that's that's the whole thing i'm 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 such a title you know I, I i'm a title freak so i i think of a title cannibal and i'm like wow it's such a strong title let's write a song about that you know so cannibal is literally about that it's about a girl that uh, ate my heart <laughs> And then it goes into Roses. Roses is 10 years old. I wrote this song. Um, it was probably one of my first big heartbreaks. Um, and that then leads me to the point in this album that talks about how time... So, so it's not a story about one specific person that broke my heart and now I'm on this journey. It's not that. And that's where it, it re will relate to many people is roses I wrote 10 years ago about another, you know, moment in my life. And that's where I've encapsulated the pain that I've felt in my life into one chapter. That's how you could put it. Anyway, so roses is just such a, you know, I partly released it ages ago, but I didn't properly record it in you know and and actually release it properly i did a live recording of it and uh, it's one of the best and one of the most beautiful ballads i've ever done and and it had to be on this album and it just tied in so perfectly once again you know showing me that you know how in my life how a song i wrote 10 years ago can have its now have its place now and and that's how how special that is. I, I still, I, I really believe that's God's plan and, and how things like that happen where you'll write, I'll write something 10 years ago and then it's now, it's now here and now I'm using it. So yeah, um, 
then we go into psychosis. Psychosis is the next chapter. It's about how when you are going through a dark patch and you, you, you go through that wounded heartbreak time, you then regain a strength, but a bit of a bad strength. It's a, a bit of a weird moment that you go through and you go a bit crazy. You go a little bit crazy and that's psychosis. Psychosis is one of my favorite songs on this, this album. It's a really, a, it's very trippy and it and it's just it's just really it's it's mad it's it's really intriguing it's going to be a single as well it's it's really oh you have to listen to that one to to get your own meaning out of it it's it's very intriguing and it's very very edgy and it's jagged it's 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 like a maniac you know and then the chapter opens and we go into Twisted. Twisted is the track where I sampled the Beethoven tune. The da -da 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 -da. and I put it into a very interesting, almost like a trap hip hop beat. Wow, we got thunder. Huh? Still good for now. The apocalypse is here. Oh no, that's an aeroplane. Oh my word, that is. check that. Get it on camera. Check. Check how high that is. I mean, check how low that is. You got it. Now track back to me. <laughs> Twisted is that, yeah, uh, it describes the psychosis that one goes through. And, and I talk about myself being, you know, multiple, you know, going through multiple almost people in my mind, voices in my head, that kind of thing. And after Twisted be becomes the song, becomes the song. It <laughs> well, it does. It, it becomes a track called Boa Constrictor. And that is my, that to me is the fall of man. That is the snake that tempts us and then kills us and and that could relate to anything and it's not just about it's you know the world it's where where we're headed where you know what we become and it's the constant circle of you know being strangled by this snake that is society that is you know temptation that is this darkness that's wrapping itself you know around I don't know I don't quite understand it but it's the way that I, I created it is it's very it's actually more one of the 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 it's very hardcore hectic hardcore like techno meets very very dark like um I wouldn't say it's dance, but it's like a cinematic, um, it's a cinematic sort of electronic versus, I don't know, I can't, a lot of these songs I can't describe, they're very, very strange, uh, yeah, okay, whoa, 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 are we good? Yeah. <laughs> then it gets to this turning point after it really gets really heavy and then faith happens and that's what happened in my life you know things got really dark and then God showed that he was the, there and that he'd always been there and that he was with me and that's faith and that's that's the faith interlude that comes in there. I just thought to myself, what would heaven sound like then? You know, if I were to make a, make some music that sounded like heaven and, and faith and and God above, you know, well, what would that sound like? So I thought, well, angels, you know, and organ. So I started with an organ and that's really the traditional, you know, church instrument. So I had this organ playing and this is where it gets really 
crazy and that's where where uh, you know heaven was with me when I created this I I had this track that was organ and then I found these beautiful extra pieces that I added to the the track this almost a it's like an angelic sounding uh, harmonic instrument and and then I had these chords going and I turned the mic on and I didn't even sit down and write a lyric I turned the microphone on and I just sang what came to me and that's what happened and that's the take that is you will hear on the album it's literally just me singing what I felt and there's about five or six lines and I sing through and the melody came to me and the li and the words came to me all at once and it was me you know expressing my what I was feeling and uh, still in a quite a heartbroken state but that I'd found that comfort and found faith found my faith again you know and that that was a moving moment I, I was really uh, I also what I did there is I just thought let me sing not let me not sing words let me just sing what comes to me in my mind like just random melodies and I started singing in opera and I've never done that before I started singing in like opera and it started like all just and then I, I clicked record and then I sang this piece and then I thought well let me double it and I clicked record again and I sang over and over and over and I did it about different but not singing the same part just different parts I did it about 25 times and then I, I, I listened to what it sounded like and it was sounded like heaven but at the same time it also sounded like cries out from the souls of earth and then I end it by, by saying that you know these these are the voices of the world crying out hear us now and that's like my the prayer the prayer of the world it's a shorter piece but it's worth listening to <laughs> it's beautiful it then goes into I thought, you know, like after this faith interlude, I want to take you into, a, you know, take the listener into a, into this chapter about faith, you know. So what's the first thing that came to my mind is I thought I'm going to write a an Our Father prayer, the Lord's Prayer. I'm going to write my version of it. Um, obviously keeping the lyrics, this, you know, the words the same and just I wrote my own Lord, uh, Lord's Prayer, you know, and that I wrote when I was in LA. I was actually, I woke up one morning and it just came to me and I thought, and now we talk, once again, we're talking a while ago, you know, this, I woke up in LA, I don't know, of all places, and I've had this tune for the Our Father in my mind and I recorded it, thank goodness I recorded it because I forgot about it and then only recently revisited the, the little recording and, and it had its place. and. That just shows this real, this beautiful plan that this that came together with this album is. I didn't. It 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 built itself. I didn't. You know. I did think long and hard about it, but it, it did build itself. Like over the years, it man it it man it built itself. It just came together so beautifully. And there was the Our Father. This little sung piece on my phone and I thought wow I put it to piano and I doubled my voice I didn't have a massive choir so I doubled my voice I don't know like 50 times to create this beautiful big choir sound and there the, our father was and then once again I went into a prayer state while I was on the mic after I sang it through I just kept it rolling and I I just started like singing this very almost this Israeli chant kind of you know this Eastern kind of chant came to me and I started so I let it run and that's what you'll hear and that's the trailer of the album now it's this really it's such a powerful piece of it's just a vocal track and it's my voice and it sounds like it came from 
2,000 years ago, uh, in Jesus' time, you know, it, it, it's really, yeah, a lot of the stuff is not of my hand. It's really, I do believe that God helped me write this, make this album. I really, I mean, if I'm just thinking back now, it's all flowing back to me, these memories. Um, yeah, I didn't write, I didn't do this on my own. Although I was on my own in the studio the whole time, I did not make this album on my own. Then it delves into the song called I Surrender, and that that is the most powerful song on this album. It is me realizing that, okay, I've, you know, you know, rediscovered my faith in a big way. But what comes next, you know, and that's to completely surrender, you know, to all worry or all, you know, stress. It's, it's really a difficult thing to do. It's one of the most difficult things to do, but uh, to strive to surrender our lives to God. And I, I was, uh, my folks actually inspired me to, you know, go to church every day. And I, I remember my dad saying, well, why don't you go to church? Like, not just on Sunday, but, you know, spend, you know, spend more time, you know, with God and go to church. So I started going to church in the week. I, I literally, from that point, uh, I went to Ma Holy Mass every single day for a whole year. And that was a big turning point in my life because I was able to completely surrender, completely surrender my life. I realized, uh, I stopped worrying about my, my career. I stopped worrying about finding love. I, I completely was able to surrender to God's plan. And, and then I wrote a song about that. And it, it, it talks about how, you know, we can, you know, no matter what jagged stones and mountains we go over, or, you know, how, you know, hectic life gets, you know, we, we, we should never fear the terror of the night because God's with us. And that's what I felt. I literally felt it and I wrote that. And it, it is the most, most beautiful thing to be able to put down, put that down, not only in words, but in song, in song. And that, that is the, it's the crux of the album for me because then it starts from there, you know, in my life, I, I feel, you know, I felt a peace. It was this peace that came over me and I no longer worried and, you know, had this anxiousness. Uh, all, uh, what's that? I, I realized that, you know, we will go through pain. We will go through, you know, difficult things in our lives, but, and, and you know, God's not going to stop those things from happening. But I realized that through those things, if we, if, if I have, if I, if I acknowledge that I have God with me, I'll be okay through it, you know? And that's, that's what I realized faith is, you know? Knowing that we'll be okay, acknowledging that we will go through difficult times, but knowing that we'll be, we'll get through it with holding God's hand, yeah. Okay, so then with faith then comes hope. And these are, once again, these are biblical themes. Hope. Hope, the hope interlude is just that. It, it, it comes from this really intriguing piano piece with this electric piano playing. And it's this, I call it a burning piano. This burning piano is playing it's almost wasting away and then comes this beautiful rock interlude that just it just smashes it and it's this beautiful this this massive stadium rock sound of hope that just comes in there and that's then takes us into how to feel which is the the lead single on this album and 
I thought to myself, you know, if I, if I want to become world renowned, I think How To Feel would be the fitting song because I, I picture myself playing this to stadiums, you know, this is a, it's a big song, it's an anthem and it's about how us, you know, got, coming out of a painful place and learning how to feel again and also knowing that, not realizing that we shouldn't be afraid to, you know, reach out and, you know, touch something that might hurt us, you know, or reach out and, you know, because I think a lot of us are really scared to pour our hearts out or uh, open ourselves up. But life is such, you know, life is very short and very, uh, I think we need to open ourselves up. We need, we can't, why close ourselves off, you know, and that, that's how to feel. It's about realizing that there's, you know, been living with demons and then realizing that in order to be able to breathe again, we need to, you know, almost drown. We need to feel the pain to, to, you know, feel again, you know, so that, that's a, and then it kind of ends, you know, the song starts off with saying, I've been drinking too much wine, trying to drown my sorrows. And then it goes to the point of, you know, you can't drink your pain away. You can't hide from it, you know, face it, face the feeling, face it, and then get to the point where you're able to sip the cup of life and taste the the good, the bad and the ugly and not be afraid. And there we go. Then it goes into Holy Sinner. Holy Sinner paints the picture of me as this this badass cowboy that's, you know, going through life and it's it's quite a it's a future it's like this futuristic kind of very once again the very alternative sound but it's about this badass cowboy that acknowledges he's got a demon on his shoulder but he he'll be all right through the hurricanes because he's holding Jesus's hand the whole way through you know and that that's that's what that song's about after holy sinner things take a, a really cool turn and it goes to the chapter of love and that's where I met the true love of my life at the least expected moment I was playing a gig in uh, on the east coast and I was playing two gigs and after the show myself and my friends went uh, went and had a drink somewhere and I met the love of my life and if I think about it it was the most perfect thing because the, the day that I met her we spoke every single day up until this day now that I'm speaking we we spoke on the phone every single day and I fell in love with her we fell in love over the phone getting to know each other um, until we couldn't keep our hands off each other um, but yeah, we, she, she's the absolute love of my life and, and God led me to her and he led her to me and we both can testify for that. Um, so I created this piece that, it was an old piece that I had and it, you know, it formed and I then thought this needs to be like a little symphony, a little beautiful piano piece, but it needs everything it needs to be huge but it needs to be gentle as well like love is and it's a instrumental piece and it's called love and it's going to play at my wedding then uh, it takes us into a song called all i see and that's uh, straightforward it's kind of the world's ending but everything's going to be okay because i've got you right in front of me the love of my life then it goes to religious drug. That, that's one of the lead singles. Well, that's one of the lead singles on this album. 
it's very very sultry it's very it's it talks i compare love to you know it's all about me comparing it to earthly terms but love is divine love is is heavenly but it's like i talk about how i'm completely you know sober in the moment but i feel like i'm high because of her love and um yeah, it's quite a sexual uh song <laughs> yeah i know it's wow it's it's very um it's very descriptive and it, it talks about how you know when you find your soulmate and you are making love it feels like an out-of-body experience and that's what religious drug is about yeah listen to it it's it's pretty cool um then oh one of my favorites all of these damn songs are my favorite you know um this song's called lifeline it was a few moments into our relationship um and i wrote the song on the guitar i was out at the beach and when i write something i've got got to got to got to record it straight away so whenever i go on vacation i take the my studio with me literally i set up the studio in whatever room is available and i recorded the song at the beach and uh yeah i recorded it in langaban on the western cape in in one of the rooms there in our a holiday home there and um i literally recorded the guitars there recorded my my vocal take a lot of the yeah a lot of these songs are one vocal take as well it's this was a one take and um i've still got it there's one little thing that i just got to tweak before i release this album there's one little thing in that song that i've got to change but this song is it's about how my 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 princess is the, the my lifeline she's my lifeline and um it's a real it's it's a song like you know the way i produced this song is like as if i was in a bar people are just chilling out having a good time and i and i just play this track and it's just it's really really a, a nice track to perform as well now we come to the the final point in this album called transcendence and this is very important because it's what this album builds up to it's a transcendence i i, I did a bit of research psychology philosophy research because i want to know what i'm talk what i'm singing about i want to know what i'm talking about and i want to be talking crap this is real so i i realized that transcendence comes in three parts and these are the three parts that i can identify with and two of the forms of transcendence i've feel like i've maybe done or am in the process of going through the first point of transcendence is transcending from transcending out of one's own ego one's self transcending from one's self and you know realizing that we are not the be all and end all and then it goes to transcendence from myself to another and that's when i found my true love i gave myself to another and i'm i'm actually about to get married so so that's it's just about to happen i'm about to completely transcend from myself and give myself to my wife um the final transcendence is transcending from our earthly being to a another place a divine or 
it's where our bodies, our souls transcend to a higher place. And I wanted to embody that and what a better way, but I was in a church one day and I was doing the music for a really big mass of children. And the children started singing a, I think it was the Hosanna or the Gloria. And they were singing it in, I think it was the Zulu version of the, I think it was the Gloria or the, and I recorded it. And I then, took it into the studio and created a little piece that describes transcendence for me and in the, in the song, in the little in interlude, you'll hear my voice come through in a mildly robotic kind of thing saying, I have freed myself from myself. She has my heart and now Lord, I give you my soul. And that's me striving to reach all three levels of transcendence. And I'm still in the process, but um, so then comes the next song. <laughs> the next song's called Zion. And I needed to throw this in because I'm such a dance music fan. And one of my biggest, well, my biggest hit is a dance song called Children of the Sun. And so I threw in the song that has, it just embodies the sound of our continent. It's got a beautifully African, an African pr rhythm and, a, and a, a really, a special connection to where I'm from. And I love the sound. I love that sound. I'm, I've traveled all over Africa and I, I am such a, such a fan. I mean, you know, I mean, I was born here. So this is a, it's like second nature to me to create a song like that. So I had to throw that on, th throw that in. Well, it, it was natural. Zion is the city of God. So I created a song that speaks about the city that is looming above us and is in the most glorious way possible and how it's up to us to you know acknowledge it and know that we're going to reach it someday and it's this beautiful mystical godly city that's there and that's Zion and you can dance because it's really gl glorious so when we go there it's it's I visualize that it's going to be a absolutely glorious place so it's a celebration of the city of God. TikTok. TikTok is a very simplistic tune but it's literally I've just been working I, I worked on it yesterday and it's really speaks about how you know the world could end tomorrow. Kind of you know me being a an advocate for stop being an egotistical, arrogant prick, basically. That's, that's what the song's about. It's like, it's to all those leaders out there or those people in power, come on, man. Like the world could, an asteroid could hit the world tomorrow and you are just an, you're an ordinary human being and all ordinary human beings are special in their own way, but it doesn't put anyone higher than anyone else and that's that's me being an advocate for you know the the clock is ticking just just chill out man you know this is a we're all the same that's what TikTok's about city in the sky it's obviously the city of god and now we're getting to the end of this album <laughs> this uh uh journey the end of this journey um, the end of this analysis. Um, City in the Sky is about how there's seven, seven billion lights which are our souls that are on this earth and we all have the chance to take our final 
excursion up to the city in the sky and uh, there's a journey to get there uh, but we can do it we've all got the access and we just need to cross the great divide by being the best people we can be that's it then the, the final track on the the final track on this album is I say that you know I, I say that all these songs are my favorite but this this is the the most special song to my the closest song to my heart because I've got a son a little angel that is almost two years old and when he was for, when he was born I recorded the the audio of his first cry as he was born and I knew that I would use that one day in, in, a, in a song and I, I then a month later he started making these beautiful little singing noises, these little coos, these little sounds and I recorded that and then two months later I recorded further, you know, just little beautiful memories on, I find audio sometimes even more special than video, you know, and I had these recordings and the time was right one night and I took them, uh, I went and sat in the studio and I started, I first started with this beautiful, this, this musical piece, uh, it was this, this n n organic sort of interesting pad, synth synthesized pad noise that I'd used before in the album. So I started messing around with that and I started playing and I was, I was playing in A flat, I think it was, and just holding the notes and then kind of just, it was, it was going between A and A flat. And then I thought, okay, let me record that down. I was really inspired. And then I pulled in cru little cruises noise, little singing noises. First is cry, I put in the beginning and then I really crafted it so, so crafted it damn well, I think. <laughs> it's like this beautiful journey of you hearing him being born and then as time goes on, you hear this beautiful musical piece and then you start hearing him sing. And when I pulled in the little sound clips to the, the, onto the computer, they were in the same key as the song that I was the musical piece that I was making and I just I cried I, I uh, this was a really special moment for me because it all came together and this was the you know this song's called Genesis it's the beginning of life and using my own son his his voice in this is I couldn't ask I couldn't ask have asked God for a better gift to be able to do that and that's raining now as we speak Thank you, Lord. And uh, we, we created, I, I put these sounds in and my, my little boy's voice is now in perfect harmony with, this, with the song. And that's Genesis, the end of the album. City of God in the jungle below. Listen to it. And uh, I hope it moves you and I hope it changes your life like it's changed mine. Okay, we better go in because it's...